In this video, I'm going to show you the most common questions that are asked in hospice interviews and help you plan great answers that will increase your chance of getting a job at the hospice. So let's start with a really important thing, which is how do you actually succeed at a hospice interview? And the first thing you want to do is make sure you know what questions are most likely to ask. And I'm going to take you through some of the most common questions and help you plan great answers and show you in general how to plan answers to hospice interview questions that help you to succeed at the interview. The next thing you want to do is make sure you've got those answers prepared. And I would recommend that perhaps you take some notes during this video and actually start fleshing out and planning some answers and get in the way of thinking of good answers to interview questions. The next thing is make sure that you bring all of the documents they ask for. They may ask you to bring identification and they may ask you to bring any qualifications with you. So it's a very good idea to make sure you have those organized because if they ask for them and you haven't brought them, it looks very bad and it shows that you're perhaps disorganized and then maybe they should employ someone else. So make sure you're well organized. The next thing is make sure you dress appropriately. So this is a very formal interview, so dress appropriately for that. And the next thing to do, and it's a really great idea, is if you can, arrange a visit. Ask them before interview, would you be able to host me for a short visit just to see the location and speak to some staff and perhaps see some patients as well so you can get a feel for the hospice and see if this is somewhere that you would like to work. And also you'll get great information. They'll tell you about the service. You'll get to see what it looks like. You'll get a feel for the environment. And when you're in the interview, there's lots of things from that visit that will magically pop into your head and will really help you to succeed at the interview. And also, when you're on that visit, you are, in a sense, on interview. So they will get an impression of you. And the fact that you've asked for a visit makes you look better in some ways than a lot of the other people applying for it that haven't visited. So it really does help your chance of getting the job. The next thing you want to be ready for is a question around what times would you be available to work at the hospice? And remember, you have to see this from their perspective. So let's think about what they are considering. So the first thing is they want to be able to provide continuous care. They need the hospice staff at all times. You can't simply leave the patients there and then all the staff go home. That's not going to work. There has to be reasonable staffing levels at all time to make sure there's good care. The vast majority of hospices will operate 24 seven. So you have to be aware of that. They may ask about working night shifts. And if they ask about it, they probably want you to say yes. So be aware of that. That may be an important part of your work. And really what they are checking for is do you meet the hospice's needs? So they have certain availability in mind and they want people that match that ideally. So the best answers that I can suggest, and you can look through these and craft your own answer based on these. One of the best things you can say is I am highly flexible and I'm able to work the full range of times to support the hospice and meeting the needs of your community. That's a great answer, very, very flexible, no restrictions on availability, and that just ticks the box that they're looking for. You may want to say something like, I will be available to work all of the times you've stated on the job advertisement. So if they have put out certain times that they're interested in on their advertisement for the job and you say you can work those, then you're meeting the requirements straight away. Then you could say something like, usually I can work a short notice if needed, offer that extra. And you could also say, I do, do my best to help out when needed and I do my best to be flexible to support a stable service. So that's where you're saying that you will go above and beyond where you can and that you're going to be someone that's useful to have in employment because you have great flexibility. So choose from some of these and craft an answer based on as many of these as you can. The more flexibility that you can show, the more likely you are to be successful because you're meeting the needs of the hospice. Let's move on to the next question, which is why do you want to work in hospice care? Now, I can't tell you why you want to work in a hospice, but what I can do is I can suggest lots and lots of things that you may want to say. And then what you can do is you can pick these and put together an answer. So one thing many people say is that you want to make an impact on quality of life at the end of life because the person who is in hospice care is still alive. They have lots of needs and you can make a really positive impact on them when they need care, probably more than they've ever needed in their life. And you can be there to provide the best quality of life possible. And that's very rewarding. You may say that hospices perform an absolutely essential function. 
that everyone will at some point die and that that needs to be as comfortable and as best managed and supported as possible. So it's a really essential societal function that hospices provide and you want to be part of that. That you enjoy helping people, that people in hospices have usually very, very high care needs and you enjoy providing that care. That you could say that you are a caring person because that's what hospices need. Hospices need caring people and that could be something that you've got in spades, that you can really show off that as a great positive. If you enjoy interacting with patients, then a hospice is a great place to work because that's what you're going to be doing a lot of the time. So say, I really enjoy interacting with patients, that you want an active job. You don't want to be sitting at an office desk. You want to be up and moving around. You may have family experiences of hospice care, particularly if you're looking to volunteer rather than applying for this as a job. It may be family experience that's got you interested in it. You can talk really positively about that. Even if you're applying for a job, saying that you're looking to move into hospice care because of positive experiences your family have had in the hospice system. Then you could say that you've got positive previous healthcare experiences. So you may have worked in, for example, a hospital or some other healthcare setting, and you can talk really positively about enjoying working in healthcare and what skills and experience you could bring from that to the hospice. That you enjoy meeting new people, that's a really simple one that you can say. That you like working as part of a team because you're going to be doing this at the hospice. That you have perhaps voluntary experience that's relevant, that could help with supporting your application and showing that you are really interested in hospice care. If you're not successful at this interview and you uh, want to gain more experience, volunteering in a hospice would be a good idea to help with future applications as well. You may have relevant qualifications that could be an asset and could also be a good link to why this is a good career move for you. And you can show off those qualifications in this question as well. You may have an academic interest in palliative care. You may find it very interesting and it is of course extremely important you may have read about the subject a lot and you're eager to learn more take part in training and cpd opportunities to learn more about it because this is something that actually interests you it is a good thing to say at interview and you may also say that it's very emotionally rewarding it's very emotionally challenging but it is also emotionally rewarding to have had that positive impact on someone's life at the end and the care that you can provide so feel free to screenshot this and take any notes that you need and use as many of these phrases as you can to craft a really good, strong and detailed answer. The next question that I would definitely have an answer ready for is how would you inform a family that a patient has died? And unfortunately, this is something that is likely to come up in your line of work in a hospice. And of course, they want to hear the right answer to this. So let's look at what you need to say. So the first thing you start off with, and it's a very reassuring start for them, is that you will follow training and established best practice. That, that is the first thing you say. So if you've been trained and taught, perhaps at your induction, how to deliver this, that you're not going to just make it up yourself, that you've not got your own secret method of doing this that you think is better than everybody else. You're just going to follow the training that's been put down or follow the established, accepted best practice of the academic literature. The next thing you say is that you would always want to assess the family's knowledge. It may be that someone has come to the hospice not expecting to die suddenly, and they have. So the family may be in a very different place there. Or it may be that someone has been on a slow, gradual decline and that the family is well aware that the end is imminent and that it is not a shock that they have died, that they expected that they were likely to die in the next 20 minutes. That's very different. And you want to have some idea, and that may be gathered from the family, or it may be gathered from other sources, other people involved in the care. You want to have some idea where the family are at before you go in and deliver that news. The next thing is, is that it should always be honest, that it should be accurate, and that it should be timely. People don't want to find out that their loved one has died three weeks after it's happened. It should be a very high priority for them to be informed as soon as possible. You want to also make sure that you have checked your information, that you are ready for any questions, and that you have the right information. That, For example, the person has actually been pronounced dead, the doctor has been in and seen them perhaps, 
and that you can definitely be able to deliver the correct information to the family. Then you must make sure that this is done in a private setting. This should not be done in a corridor. This should not be done in the presence of other people who are not directly involved in their care or appropriate people to be there at the time. So you want to take it in a private setting that you should not use any euphemisms. So you should say very clearly that the patient has died, that they are dead. You are not to use phrases like they've passed away or that they have moved on. Because for example, if you say that um, unfortunately your father has moved on, they may ask to which hospice. And then you have to say, no, they've not moved somewhere else, they have died. You should be very clear and very direct. You want to avoid any other phrases that could perhaps be misunderstood you have to be clear because you're communicating the news that they have died. That is what you have to say. The next thing is you must use clear and understandable language. You want to avoid using long, complicated medical terms. You want to be clear and to the point, and you want to make sure that it is understood and using clear, sensible language is the best way to do that. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to be there for any questions. You want to allow the family time to ask their questions. They may ask questions straight away. They may ask one question, there may be a break, or you may just have to wait for a minute or two in silence before they ask anything, but you need to be available for those. So the best way to answer this is make sure that you know the research, because a lot of people have done research on how to do this. There is training available. Follow that and then talk through each of these things and then you are most likely to be successful on this question. The next one is a similar what would you do in this situation type one, which is what would you do if the family complained or were angry about a patient's care? And unfortunately, this happens. Things don't always go perfectly. And it may be that the hospice isn't meeting the expectations of the family and they may wish to raise a complaint. And there is a correct way of dealing with this. And let's look at how you can answer this question to maximize your chance of being successful. So the first thing you say is that you would listen. So before you do anything and jump into anything, you're gonna take time to listen to what they have to say because this is a very serious matter. And I can assure you that the family want to be listened to. And if they feel like they're not being listened to, you're gonna have a bigger problem. The next thing is you always approach it with compassion and use the word compassion in your answer. Then you say a follow-up, which is that you will always be understanding of it, that this is extremely important, that the family really want their loved one to be cared for as best as possible, and you need to have an understanding of that. The next thing you say is that you take complaints about care very seriously. That If someone is putting in a complaint about a patient's care, that needs to be taken seriously and dealt with appropriately. And when we talk about dealing with it appropriately, you say that you're going to follow the hospice's complaints policies. You probably don't know exactly what they are and you don't want to make it up. You just say very clearly that you will follow the appropriate complaints policy. You will also safeguard the patient. You don't go into great detail as to how it may not be relevant. There may be not particularly large safeguarding implications in this complaint or it may involve very large safeguarding implications. Um, safeguarding considerations and it may be that the best interests of the patient and the the views of the family may be in conflict and then it rises to a safeguarding situation and you need to say that you would always safeguard the patient and then lastly what you're trying to do overall and you finish your answer with this is that you want to resolve any issues and provide excellent care that is what you're always wanting to do so if the family raise a complaint about the care that actually identifies a failing it's important that, that is fixed and the basic motivation for you is to provide the best care and when something goes wrong you're going to do your best to fix it in line with the hospice's policies so talk through each of the things on this list and you'll have a great answer to this question the next one is a very sensitive question and one that you want to answer in the right way. So they may ask a simple question, which is what are your salary expectations? And you have to be careful about how you ask this, answer this rather. So let's look at what things you need to think about and then how to answer it. So firstly, you want to be aware of now is not the time to negotiate. 
Firstly, you don't want to be suggesting a salary that is much lower than they were thinking of offering you. And you probably don't want to also be pricing yourself out of the job. So you don't want to negotiate now. The best time to negotiate a salary is after they've offered you a job. When they've chosen you out of everybody else and said you are the best person for this job, you're in a much better position to negotiate than when you are one of 20 people. So now is really not the time to get into deep negotiations. The next thing you want to do is avoid exact figures. You don't want to say a specific number to you know the individual tiny little fractions of a dollar or fractions of a penny. Now is not the time. The next thing you want to do is consider the employer type. So are you applying to a charity or a for-profit um, institution? In many cases, it is the situation where hospices are largely or entirely or partially funded by charitable donations. So that will change the nature of the salary and there may be more constraint in what they are available to pay because of the charitable status. And you have to have some consideration of that. The next thing is you want to reference the, the job advertisement. So if it gives a range in the ad that you've applied for, when so when the job was put out, it says that there is a range. You could say that you're happy with the range that has been stated and that you consider this competitive. So if the range is acceptable, then that's what you will say. You may be thinking that your skills and experience demands the higher end of the range, but again, you're probably better to point that out if they press you and they ask follow-up questions or after you're offered the job. The next thing to do is definitely research typical salaries in the hospice sector and ensure you're competitive. So you don't want to be um, asking for the lowest end when you have lots and lots of experience and you don't want to be asking for more or a range that is significantly higher than anybody else gets. So you want to be sensitive to what is the actual pay for your role. And then when you come to answer it, the best way to say is I would give serious consideration to salaries in the range of one number to another number. And you give a wide range that is sensible and is basically what they have in mind anyway. And then you can negotiate later once you've got a job offer and that's when the best time to actually start thinking about whether you should be at the higher end or the lower end of the range and your skills and experience and qualifications will likely determine that so that's how you answer that and not basically price yourself out of the job or basically talk them into offering you a lower figure than you'd be interested in so keep it vague keep it broad focus on ranges and then you'll get through this question the next one you want to be ready for is, can you tell me about your previous experience? And you need to think about one, why are they asking this? And two, what is most important? And then structuring an answer around that. So fundamentally, they want people with relevant experience. The more experience you have, the better. And the more relevant your experience, the better that is. Then you want to meet the person's specifications. So when they put out the job advertisement, they'll have a list of things that they are looking for. And really, when you're answering this, you want to be showing off as many as you can. So go back to the job advert, look through what they're saying they're looking for, and try and say as much of that as possible. And then really what they want is they want to be confident that you can do the job. They're asking this to see, do you have a, any experience that shows me that you can actually do this job well? So let's look at what you actually talk about. So the first thing is hospice experience. If you have any hospice experience, that's the first thing you talk about because that is the best experience for this job. Then more broadly, you talk about healthcare experience. So always go in and talk about that because that is the single best experience that you can have and that's where you start. Then either if you don't have healthcare or hospice experience, you go straight to the wider experience. But if you do have wider experience, this can add to your healthcare or hospice experience. And you want to be careful when you talk about this to link it back to the hospice. So any other jobs that you've had, how does that help you? For example, if you worked in customer service, you are good at dealing with people. You're good at resolving complaints. You're good at interacting with the public. You're good at providing that personal touch. There's things like that you can say. Any qualifications that you've achieved is a good idea to mention those because that shows that you've got some skills and some knowledge, and you want to focus on the most relevant to the least relevant. 
any palliative care qualifications and experience is of course really 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 good so if you've worked in nursing in a hospital you will have palliative care experience and you may have picked up some training in that and that's a good thing to mention any time you've worked in any setting where palliative care is involved even if it's not in a hospice that experience is one that you definitely want to bring up and then you want to link all of your experiences back to the hospice so whatever job it is you want to talk about how that's going to make you better at the job and that's how you succeed so every time you say some bit of experience the follow-up has to be and I would use this at the hospice too. And from this experience, I will be able to do this at the hospice. Everything you do, link it back, and you're really just trying to convince them that you'll be great at the job. So take as many of these as you can, structure it with your most relevant to your least relevant, and link everything back to the job and show them that you can do it and you'll be successful in this question. Before the interview finishes, they're likely to say, do you have any questions? And the wrong answer is to say no. The right answer is to have a couple of questions, usually two to three questions prepared and be ready to answer, ask these. So here are some that I would suggest and you may want to think of your own ones as well. So a good question would be, what CPD opportunities do your staff undertake here to support continuous development? You may ask, can you tell me more about the training and induction process at your hospice? Show an interest in training and development. You could say, I am, of course, very interested in this position. Therefore, could you tell me the next steps in your recruitment process? Find out what happens next, when you'll find out, do you get feedback? These are things you probably want to know. You might say, what um, do you see as your service improvement priorities and how would I be able to support these in my role? And if they say that we're looking to improve this or this is an area of focus, basically start talking about how you could support that and that looks really good. And lastly, you want to offer sincere thanks to the interviewers and end positively. So I hope this was helpful too. I wish you the best of luck in your hospice interview. And finally, thank you very much for watching.